A huge meteorite enters our atmosphere, causing an explosion of catastrophic proportions. All forms of life on Earth cease to exist. A giant wave of fire wraps around the planet several times until only ash and dust remain of the green landscape. But then again, there's another option for our planet's future. The sun could swallow it. Wait, 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 wait. Who is this? In the course of its evolution, our star will keep expanding. Am I the only one hearing this voice? Until it gets so big that it just swallows our planet without even noticing it. Hey buddy, that's my video. I don't think so. Okay, alright, I'll share it with you. But let's not look that far into the future. Whatever you say, buddy. How about the fact that the Earth will soon have rings? Like Saturn? Almost. Saturn's rings are made of dust and ice. Yeah, I've heard about that. Thousands of years ago, something really mysterious happened in Saturn's orbit. The planet's gravity tore one of its satellites apart. Yes, Saturn is a gas giant. It's 95 times heavier than Earth. So it has stronger gravity. It attracted a small moon from its orbit to its surface. Then, it was torn apart from the inside by tidal forces, like the ones between Earth and Moon. Many huge fragments stuck in Saturn's orbit. Some scientists say there was a collision of two moons there. They crashed into each other like billiard balls. As a result, both cosmic bodies turned into a pile of debris and blocks of ice. No matter how they got there, this debris started circling Saturn. They collided with each other, turning into smaller rocks. It was a kind of cosmic blender. Rocks gradually ground into dust, and huge blocks of ice turned into small crystals. On average, the objects are in the same ratio to these rings as a human fingernail to a school bus. And soon, similar rings will appear around Earth. But how? I mean, we have the moon, and it's hard to imagine that it could break apart at any moment. Plus, we don't have another moon to recreate the same collision in our orbit. Space junk. We have a lot of it. We started launching spacecraft into Earth's orbit in about 1957, and it almost always follows the same scenario. Ah, yes. The rocket consists of several parts. A booster, or even several of them. The second stage of the rocket and a cargo, which is contained in a capsule at the end of the rocket. The booster accelerates the rocket to almost orbit and then undocks. The second stage fires up the engines and climbs even higher to get the cargo into orbit. Then the second stage undocks as well, and the cargo capsule releases the satellite or space probe into outer space. Yes, the first and the second stages of the rocket in the cargo capsule were disposable. That means they stayed in Earth's orbit. Over time, our planet attracted them. They entered the atmosphere and burned up because of friction with the air. But many objects keep orbiting our planet for decades. As of 2021, there are about 170 million space debris objects in our orbit. These are parts of spacecraft, like the bolts used to undock rocket stages. There are also old artificial satellites, operating ones, functioning spacecraft, and debris from collisions that had already happened. Oh, I've heard about that. In 2009, two satellites collided with each other. Both satellites were destroyed. They shattered into about 600 pieces of different sizes. Yes, and these sharp metal fragments are flying in orbit at about 6 miles per second. So they could make a trip from New York to London in less than 10 minutes. Yeah, that's about the same speed at which our rockets fly. And that's about 45 times faster than commercial airplanes. So these fragments have a lot of energy. As they collide with each other, they shatter and become smaller. Just like the moon debris around Saturn. Exactly. But a bunch of metal debris orbiting faster than the speed of sound can damage our spacecraft, right? Yes. The International Space Station has already turned on its engines to maneuver once to avoid a collision with a cloud of space debris. Sharp metal parts can damage the hull of the space station or even puncture it. Then the ISS, worth about $150 billion, would be destroyed. So if we keep throwing debris into orbit, we could really give our planet the rings. And then they will be visible even during the day. They will reflect sunlight, just like the moon. And if you look out the window, you'll see beautiful stripes interrupted by the shadow that the Earth casts. It's an amazing view. Do you want to see an even more unusual one? Imagine that our Sun has increased in size by 10 times. And that process is happening right now. Our star is a giant boiler burning hydrogen. It's continually heating up, and every billion years, the Sun gets 10% brighter and creates more heat. It'll heat the Earth more, and eventually, the oceans and seas of our planet will begin to evaporate. 
thick clouds will completely cover the sky, turning Earth into a giant greenhouse. Our home will look like Venus. Looks like humanity will no longer be able to live on Earth. What will we do then? Well, we'll load all the humans and animals into spaceships and move to Mars. At that point, the sun will have warmed it up nicely. Water and carbon dioxide deep in the planet's interior will begin to evaporate and create an atmosphere there. This will cause a greenhouse effect and warm up the planet enough for you to wear shorts there. And then we'll watch the Earth become a lifeless rock with acid clouds like Venus from the surface of Mars. Yep, but in about 7 billion years, the Sun will start to expand even more and become a red giant. In this phase, it'll become 256 times wider than it is now. So it will completely swallow Mercury and Venus, and the edge of the star will lie just in the orbit of Earth. So our planet will just drown in the hot plasma on the sun's surface? Eh, maybe. But when a star burns so much fuel, it loses weight. And so, the sun's gravitational field will weaken as well. So it won't keep the planets of the solar system as close to itself anymore. Perhaps our planet's orbit will become wider, and then Earth will become the first planet near the sun. Some scientists believe that, at this time, Saturn's moon Titan may gain conditions suitable to become a new home for humanity. Then, the Sun will begin to shed its upper layers. It'll lose mass and gravity dramatically. This will plunge the solar system into chaos. Some planets will collide with each other. Others may just fly away into the far dark space. It would be a game of cosmic billiards. Exactly. And the final stage of the Sun's life is a white dwarf. Then our star will become the size of Earth. The planets that survive won't get enough heat from the white dwarf, and its light will gradually fade over billions and trillions of years. Another challenge that awaits Earth in the distant future has a galactic scale. Ah, the collision of the Milky Way and Andromeda. Bingo! Right now, the Andromeda galaxy is moving toward us at 60 miles per second. You could make a trip around the globe at that speed in just six minutes. Yeah, you can already see the stars and gas of Andromeda Galaxy in the night sky with an unaided eye at 2.5 million light-years from Earth. And in 4 billion years from now, the galaxies will begin the process of merging. No one could be 100% sure about what will happen to the Earth. It could be total chaos when the stars and nebulae of both galaxies collide. Then supernova explosions would go off everywhere. Like fireworks. But this is extremely unlikely to happen. The concentration of stars and space objects in galaxies is very low. The distances between them are gigantic. It's like if you took a handful of sand and scattered it all over the planet. The most likely scenario is that by the time the two galaxies do collide, there will be no liquid water on the hot surface of Earth. That would mean the end to all terrestrial life. Scientists believe it can happen in about 3.75 billion years.